All right, so we are back at Peanut Gallery. Let's do some heckling from the hard camera. All right, so our heckling from the hard camera is a actually probably going to be a two-part series because there's so much entailed with this. It is the meccas of the mat. We're going to talk about professional wrestling, um, I guess, either rabid fan bases or we're going to talk about, like, centers of professional wrestling in, in general. And we're going to talk about a couple of different eras, styles, etc. So, we are going to first talk about the Carney days. So, in the Carney days of professional wrestling, the vast majority of carnival shows occurred in the Midwest, especially between the 1870s and the 1910s. Yep. The reason for that, and this is going to be an interesting theme throughout the professional wrestling world, is because of immigration. Yep. Within the Midwest, there was a lot of Germans... Eastern Europeans, Scandinavian professional wrestlers, um, and professional wrestling fans as a result. So, within the carnival days, professional wrestling was most was was most popular within the Midwest, especially the competing cities at the time, St. Louis and Chicago. Now. St. Louis, most people don't think about it as wrestling mecca anymore, but it was. It has been. It's one of the original wrestling meccas. And that's why they go there right, all, the time. all the time. But Chicago, to this day, is the number one professional wrestling market in the United States. To this day. Before New York? Yeah. Really? To this day, yep. Really? Professional wrestling fans are more involved in Chicago than I mean, else. one of one of the most famous Carney matches, which was the second match between um, uh, George Hackenschmidt and Frank Gotch, was in Chicago. Yep. Also, the NWA was founded in that area as well. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And let's talk about the NWA. Yeah, let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. The territories. So this is going to be more involved in my second part of it, but in the NWA. Um, so when they originally started producing on television, because this was the first, so working to the 1950s now, the NWA starts to do syndicated professional wrestling promotions on television, and the most popular, um, the most popular television studios was actually the first one was in Los Angeles before New York. The first syndicated one was actually not based out of New York City. was based out of Upper New York, which was sh- is essentially Albany. Right. It's a suburb of Albany was where the first professional wrestling promotion that was syndicated on television was Which, I, if produced. I'm not mistaken, that Shentity, was... Shentati, Shentati, I don't remember the, was that the a, city. Was that Tootsmont? No, it was not. No. Okay. Um, so you got New York, so you got New York, Upper New York, and then Obviously. you have Los Angeles, which was uh, professional wrestling from Hollywood. Yes. Then you have the WWWF, which was based out of Madison Square Garden. And they obviously had a command over the Northeast. The reason that it was popular in the Northeast at the time was because of another group because of, of immigrants. Because of the immigrations, right? Yep. In the early 1900s, which were the um, Hispanic. We're not talking about the Latino Hispanic from Mexico, which is a different era. We're talking about but Spaniards. We're, talk- we're talking about like the Spaniards. We're talking about... The um, Puerto Ricans, we're talking about the uh, Cubans, Hondurans, like they they came up from from uh, those after the Mexican American War to New York City. Also, you had a lot of Italians, another huge market yep. for professional wrestling. Actually, 
the the um, that market was so popular they actually created three centers of professional wrestling New York Boston and Philadelphia all right. for different reasons right so Boston was more that traditional fighting like like strong not strong style but like uh, maybe bruiser way what you would uh, what you would equate with Bruiserway today, right? Like, like, that, like that, more, more of that traditional, right? That wrestling, more like right. rough and tumble, like you know, punch in the face sort of thing. In Philadelphia, obviously, you have the more hardcore. You got the chairs. Eventually, you got that sort of culture there. And and Philadelphia has always been known for their rabid fan bases, no matter what it is, but. Within wrestling, that's the big thing. A very, York, a very, a very passionate right. fan base, but a very big fan base is a part of association of violence. Um, I actually believe, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of that was because of the um, steel industry yes. and backyard fighting yes. in the steel industry. Right. And then you got New York, which was more the showmanship sort of because wrestling. Because it's because it's yep. New York, and you know the nineteen twenties, thirties, exactly. Right. So within the professional wrestling industry up to this point, you got the you got the Northeast, you have the Midwest, which was not just Chicago and uh, St. Louis, but you also got Minneapolis starting to come up. Right. You got Indianapolis. You yeah, got um, Detroit. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Yep, Pittsburgh. You got that upper Midwest sort of area. And then you have the West Coast, which is essentially Los Angeles at this point in time. Now, starting in the 70s, you got the South coming into prominence. So there are two areas of the South that really came into prominence at that point in time. You got the Southern wrestling style, which was Georgia Championship. Championship Wrestling. Yep. Yep. And then you got that combined with Jim Crockett, which was based out of... Atlanta? Um, no, it wasn't Atlanta. It was um, Charlotte, North Carolina. It was Charlotte, right, mm-hmm. right, right. Okay. So you got those two. And then you also have Texas, which kind of, it was it was ahead of its time. But you got the W, you got the, um, uh, the WWWF, I believe. No. No. That is, that was. No, that was, um, oh God, it was, it was Dallas. Whatever Dallas was. Um, so there were two. So there was the um, there was world class. Uh, world class. That was there was, there was world class. Right. And then um, Southwest. Right. So so yeah, WCCW. That was a popular. Those are two big hubs. Yes. Yeah, so, um, WCCW was yep. uh, Von Erichs. Right. The Von Erichs. That's what. Yeah. Yep. So anyways, um, so those were those were the two big wrestling like Southern wrestling styles in the seventies. Well, then you had Tri State, which was right. kind of like there. Yeah, it was there. No one cared about that one. Anyways, <laughs> it was it was Georgia and it was WCCW. Well, because, well, right, because Georgia merged with Crockett. Right, and then Crockett turned into WCW. Right, and that so was that Atlanta. so anyways. Right. Atlanta became a huge wrestling hub after that. Well, as a part of the Georgia mm-hmm. style, well, the if- southern the southern wrestling style that's where that's where Georgia came into the line. Right, line and that's that traditional wrestling. Right, and then you got you know with the WCCW, really Texas kind of fell out of the way. I think I think we should probably even go about um, let's talk about Tokyo. Yeah. So, anyways. Back in this time, too, there were international destinations that were also very popular. So Tokyo became a very popular mecca, if you want to call it that, for, for mega shows. I right, think. for mega shows. They were, they were original mega shows. They were before WrestleMania Oh, was. yeah. Uh, they, 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 were, did, they did shows, yep. mega shows, like in the 60s. Yeah. So um, they were the um, they were I guess the the popularizers of s- not s- oh yeah strong style right and also from uh, um, from Ricky Doe and also yeah yeah strong style and then you got attorney style from Anoki yes so you got two different styles that emerged in Japan as a result of the post World War II boom in entertainment right. Um, so you got two different promotions, which was NJPW, what would later become NJPW, and you got AJPW. Yes. Two different styles that were very popular, and then 
NJPW came up with that Tokyo Dome kind of show. Right. Now, in London, London was another very popular place for professional wrestling. You got a lot of... Um, you got some of that strong style from Japan come over. But you also got a lot of American style. You got that sort of British bruiser style. Not, not necessarily bruiser weight, but that like sort of rough and tumble, like almost fighting right. sort of thing. Like, 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 Fit, like, like Fit Finley. Right, like the grappling part like we exactly. saw with the Carney days. Yes. Yes. Um, Australia was... They had it here and there, but they were never. They were they, never. They, they were, were never, never destination. Never. But let's talk about Mexico. Mexico. Mexico is such a different atmosphere as a part of wrestling because. And the reason I chose CML is because that literally was founded when the they they were um, yes EMLL. C- CMLL. They were EMLL. Well, before. yes, but, but but when that was, it is right now the. Oldest standing consecutive mm. wrestling promotion on the planet, and they incorporate a lot of styles of um, a lot of uh, lucha. So lucha libre was a combination of fighting styles from Mexico and also traditional rituals, like, actually, and, and the influence of the French, actually, when they tr- attempted to take over Mexico. Yes. Yeah. So we talked about that earlier, but 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 also um, there there was a the, uh, theatrical part right. where that's where the masks come in because they right. interpreted like gods, heroes, villains. Right. But my point is is that Mexican professional wrestling really influenced a lot of those southern style mm-hmm. promotions in the nineties because I think actually, they were so popular. So I think it influenced all of wrestling, yeah. I'll be honest with so, you. So so you you look back on American professional wrestling. So let's go back to NWA territories. Okay. So they influenced Texas. So a lot right. of those southern Texan promotions Um Eddie Eddie like um people like Eddie Guerrero and stuff went through Southwest or mm-hmm. the um Western state sports in right. El Morello because that is the New Mexico territory. Right. Where and actually us who were actually born in Colorado, um, AWA was super popular. So you can say a name like um, Kurt Henning or Nick Bockwinkle. But we didn't. But the point is we didn't get a lot of those Mexicans because of that divide. Right. We never did. Right. So my point is, the reason I wanted to bring this back up was because a lot of what modern lucha libre style is in the United States because of Southern professional wrestling. Yep. So yeah, not not, not 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 so much of world class. Right. World but, class. But you is got but you got Southern Texas. You got Southern California. You have the Western State Wrestling Alliance. You got. Um, even Georgia Championship yep. or WCW. Even even like SoCal stuff right. too. You have them um, too. But let's talk about some more modern. Which is um World right. Wrestling Association. Yep. So the the point is is that you see that professional wrestling styles come into the foray by means of immigration. Let's talk about even um, Canada with Stampede. Yep, Stampede. You and um, AWA, AWA to a point, yep. All Stars Wrestling in Vancouver. Um, yep. You have Northlands Wrestling. I yep. mean, a lot of those are influenced. And a lot of those um, up top. So it's kind of weird. So up top wrestling up here is more about right. that pure wrestling. Oh, okay. Because with Stampede, right. you had the hearts. And the hearts right. have they're, been... They're more that pure style. The, the dominant right. force. But down they're, below in Mexico, right. you get more character. Right. So you got... Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Is that you got these two styles coming together. So right. if you look at Southern wrestling, you got more of the characterization. Whereas you look towards the more northern parts... You got more of the athleticism. Especially right over here so, with um, our friendly fans in New York. Right. So, let's talk about modern wrestling. So, obviously, modern wrestling today is based a lot out of Florida. Right. And and that is mainly because that's where all the big wrestling promotions are based now. AEW. WWE even is based out of Florida these days. I mean, it's not. I mean, but... Is all, Connecticut. But all the wrestlers are based out of Florida. Well, a lot of them are 
in Florida because that's where the performance center is. But you get a lot of influence. You still get that influence. I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. Anyways, well, that's a good. Well, well, because that's see, a the, good way. To okay, 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 okay. Wait, and, and influence and where it's actually from are very different things because WWE and AEW have a different philosophy. But my point is, is that most professional wrestling takes place now in the South. You cannot disagree with me on that one. I guess in a way I can't. Yeah, WWE based in the South. You have. NWA, which is in Atlanta. You have Impact Atlanta. Wrestling. You have um, you have AEW. You have only now now the only one that I will even say is ROH. different is Ring of No Ring of Honor is different. They're in Baltimore. And again, whether or not you want to consider Baltimore the South it is, is not the South up to your interpretation. Well, maybe but, if you're not a retard. But my point being is that. A lot of wrestling as we know it today, a lot of styles and trends are based off of immigration. Right. And where is most of our immigration coming from these days? The South, right? And so my question and challenge to you is... Now I don't know about statistics. That might vary. Well, we're, well, let's talk about the fan base, though. The fan base, a lot of the fan base is based out of the South. Yeah, I could say Southern that. immigration. I would, I would say Latin American sort of. You know, you got Bad Bunny, of course, a mega Latin rapper, right? But you also have, you know, WWE, which is a northern promotion. But when was the last time they promoted someone from Europe? A rapper from you. I mean, the point a is rapper from Europe. There's I mean, no rappers from Europe. So, so the point is. The point is, is that wrestling in general, and this is my challenge. I mean, you're going to lose. Don't even try. Is that wrestling in general is very much based on the cultures of immigrant groups. And this has been the case since the very early days. Right. And I think that through the evidence that I've, that I've given has been sufficient you don't see a lot of major wrestling promotions arise out of Boston, for example, because of the fact that WWE controls it. But also because there just isn't a big culture for wrestling out there. Um, but WWE, why, why would you compete with a northern fucking thing like WWE? That doesn't make WWE, it. Because WWE, in my opinion, is no longer a Connecticut-based promotion. It is a Connecticut-based promotion. You can, you can bitch and moan about it as much as you want, but they are a northern promotion. They have been there since the fucking 50s. They are but their, their style is not. Yes, they are. In fact, they're actually more so now than they ever have been. It's I'm, showmanship. It's literally showmanship. But that how, do is, you, how do you know that showmanship is not a part of the Latin American culture? But because the problem is with WWE is that their dominance was based out of McMahon's thing about knowing what things right. work on television. But I'm not talking about that anymore. It's not about that anymore. It's about. It is about where maybe maybe, maybe we'll maybe we'll do a uh, maybe we'll do a debate about it if we don't have anything yeah. going. So anyways, because I'm I'm gonna disagree anyways, with you. Anyways, my my thesis about this is that. Professional wrestling is now more southern in in terms of its popularity and in terms of its style than hmm. ever before. Okay. I mean, you're, you're. I mean, like I said, we'll do a debate about it. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that you're 100 percent incorrect, but I'm saying that you're wrong. So, anyways, <laughs> we'll have a debate about that. <laughs> And um, so, I have a follow up to this for next week. So, yeah, so when we stay tuned. So when we come back, um, because Double or Nothing was a show based around Las Vegas, I want to go back in time to wrestling cultural impact in the city of Las Vegas. Oh, a southern city! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! It's so, so southern. <laughs> 